Okay, well, if that person was of a different color, yeah. which is an issue that we have in this country, would they have gotten that fair treatment? Right. And I think really that's what people are upset about. Of course. Even if they agree that he was supposed to be let free, the hard part is, is that we have seen time and time again in this country, like, if it was the other way around, I don't know if that would have been the case. Yes. Because like, yes. we, saw, we saw with the case with the young lady who was... I think she was like sex trafficked or or something like that, right? And she she murdered her rapist, right? Yeah. And her she, pimp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. I am your host, David So, and we have double ed time today. Double ed hey, in the house. Up? Ed on Ed Blowjobs. You could say you're no. getting DP. <laughs> oh my God. He's already starting double on part. <laughs> yep, exactly. We double double part, dude. Yeah. You fucking love it. What have you been up to? Oh, this fool just got his car broken. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. I just forgot about it. You got to remind me of this shit again. Yo, the inconsistency of like the shit they stole from my car, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I told you guys before we started this, but all right, so check it out, guys. Um, I got my, I got <laughs> anything of value stolen from my car, obviously, but these motherfuckers also decided to steal a used face mask, uh, <laughs> a car manual. I uh, like the way this one smells. Yeah. Car <laughs> registration, but yet they left behind things like umbrella uh hand sanitizer uh my my fast track pass um beanies that i had in the trunk like what what what, what is the <laughs> so right there's they, no they took your registration which they don't need but they <laughs> yeah. left your fast pass yeah. which they could use yeah, exactly <laughs> so it's like what the f that's that's why it, it makes me think it was a crackhead who did it oh you it's know? for sure a yeah. fucking crackhead yeah. dude oh yeah the registration was like are these some stocks or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When I was in this a, means I own the car. <laughs> it's mine now. <laughs> when I was in a UCR, there was this dude named Peter. Peter yeah. There was only a couple of people who had cars, right? <clears throat> so Peter, before he got a, like a Toyota, remember that Toyota Solara? Oh yeah, the Camry Coupe. Yeah, yeah. the weird yeah, yeah, looking yeah, yeah, Camry yeah. Coupe. So yeah. that was the car that he got after this break-in. Yeah. So there was only a couple of people in college at the time that were friends of mine that actually had a car. But the people who did have a car, they were all hoopties. There was mm -hmm. this dude, uh, Peter. There was this other dude named Phil. And Phil had this fucking hoopty ass like MPV van. You know the MPV yeah. ones? Oh, yeah. My mom had one for like 15 dude, years. Yeah, that, we had that shit too, man. <laughs> Tell you something. I love Honda Elements and yeah. I love MPVs. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, fucking Peter... In the parking structure that he parked his car at next to the apartment that we lived in, his shit got broken into. This is mm. the funniest thing. This fool had his car broken into. They smashed the windows. His car was so fucking shitty. I kid you not. They just stole a single gum <laughs> out, of, <laughs> out of the mini double mint packet. Shit. Right, and yeah. then he found a dollar in there that wasn't there oh before. Yeah. He found a dollar. He found. I think wow. they smashed his windows and yeah. they gave him a dollar. Here's wow. a tip. That's how <laughs> shitty his fucking car was, dude. Dude, it felt so bad for him. Like, yo, you needed more than. I do. <laughs> and the funny thing is, the fact that he knew a single double mint gum was taken out is hilarious. Yeah, that <laughs> so is. I was saving that for later. <laughs> <laughs> this little fucking Vietnamese dude. He goes, they fucking stole my gum, man. <laughs> I'm like, what you mean? He goes, I had three gum. He stole oh, one gum. Oh, gosh. Oh, shit. This dude, Peter, was fucking hilarious. He told us this one story in college that had me dying. And this is like when you know you're a little different from everybody else. Yeah. So this is that time where I think when everybody gets to know each other, they kind of open up and they tell personal stories about themselves. <laughs> Peter, fucking... I forgot who shared the story. I think it was a dude named Daryl that was sharing his story about... He kind of grew up without a father and his uh, mom was a single mom that raised him. And then I think Peter wanted to like join in on the sadness to kind of say like, <laughs> yeah. I relate to you. I have a sad story too. Mm -hmm. But he's like a Vietnamese fob. And the way he said it had me die. I busted up laughing because he <laughs> goes, my uncle went fishing on a boat. <laughs> a wave hit him. He died. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I, I was, what the fuck? I started dying laughing. Yeah. And I felt so bad, but I couldn't <laughs> stop laughing, dude. Wave hit him. He died. <laughs> it's the most fucking well, I mean, sad boys. Yeah. <laughs> to like, be right, fair, Peter. the execution was not on point That's with the I'm sadness. <laughs> you know? It's like the funny, it's because it's like a Vietnamese fob too. So he's telling about the story like in Vietnam. Uh -huh. But the way he described it was just so sudden. Wave hit him. 
<laughs> he died. <laughs> <laughs> this dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bro. He's like, <laughs> 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 What was that? What was that uh, meme from? He's so basically they're having an intervention. Um, his their dad is a drug addict, and the kids are trying to tell him like, "Yo, enough is enough." You're, oh. you know, and then he, that's how he breaks into. He just. <laughs> He's definitely never cried before. Yeah, yeah. this is the first it time he ever so cried. It was so awkward it was, and so unexpected. Like it's just an outburst out of nowhere. So, but I just want you to know, <laughs> yeah. through all the pain, yeah. I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, oh, I think <laughs> that that happened at the same time. There was that clip. It was in Africa, and there was an interviewer asking this person <laughs> why they're gay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have why you seen you that? Oh, I, yeah. I haven't seen that one. And it is literally the funniest fucking thing. It's this janky production. It's like yeah. some African news type of thing. I don't know how legitimate it is, uh-huh. but it's I, she's like some type of either gay rights activist or she just happens to be gay. Okay. But he's interviewing her, and off the jump, he goes, why are you gay? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's, uh... uh why are you gay? <laughs> you are gay. Like, what the fuck is going on? And she's like trying to explain because I, I think it, he's like very Christian. And okay. so talking about oh, like yeah. how being gay is a sin. <laughs> oh, he see. goes, no, you are gay. Why are you gay? <laughs> I don't understand why you are gay. You are gay. Oh, <laughs> he said, because I... Because I'm gay. He's yeah. like, no, but why are you gay? <laughs> <laughs> like, literally the cold opening question. Wait, when, the, was, when was this from? This was years okay, ago, dude. Okay, it's so like back in the days. Back in the day. And yeah. it was around the same time I saw both those clips. I see. I see. So <laughs> fucking like funny. Public access TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you gay? Well, this is a weird transition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually going to talk about, and I, I tweeted this a while ago. Um, during the whole Kyle Rittenhouse thing and people were part of the Patreon and stuff. I um, I have somebody who reads the the requests and stuff. Uh, I'll be I'll get back on the Patreon. It's been a while. There's a lot of shit going on right now. What you mean? You got somebody who reads the request to you? Yeah, and they and they they uh they kind of just do they do they bring a scroll with them? <laughs> That's exactly what I was Sir thinking. David. I don't know why that was in my head too. But, yeah. like, yeah. the but they'll kind of break down like topic suggestions and whatever. Yeah. So um this one specifically was hard to talk about because it was still an ongoing trial. And we're going to talk about Kyle Rittenhouse, right? Mm. Now we mentioned about the Kyle Rittenhouse thing. When, when, did, when did this happen? It was last year. Yeah, it was last year. Um, and the verdict just happened about a week ago. Yeah. So yeah. just to, just to kind of, if you don't know, which you probably already know a general idea about what this is. Kyle Rittenhouse is a young man under the age of 18 at the time. I think he's 18. Now. He is 18 now. He's yeah. 18 now. I think he was 17. Then he decided to cross state lines. It was it from Illinois to Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. To yeah. Wisconsin. Kenosha. Yeah. He had a semi-automatic rifle and according to him, and we're going to go through the case um, just factually, and then we're going to discuss it. But uh, carried an AR-15. He said that he went over there to protect uh, small businesses because of the writing that was happening during the whole BLM protest. Um, he decides to go there. Long story short, and once again, we'll go into detail. Two pe- He shot two people. Um, shot and, and killed two people. Shot and killed two people. Injured one. Shot him in the bicep. Blew off his bicep. Uh, this was huge news, right? And the reason why I didn't want to discuss it during because there wasn't all the information wasn't out there. So I couldn't really collectively think of what to say, right? Yeah. Because it was so brand new. And to kind of put my thoughts and ideas into a hat where I don't know what the fuck is going on doesn't really make sense to mm. me, right? Yeah. And it would just be a discussion of what ifs at that point, um, which I wasn't really interested in. Yeah. So now that the the verdict is out, Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted of all charges. Right. Right. And right. there was about and we'll, we'll talk five, five. Of them. there was yeah. about five five charges right yes five felony charges and there was the misdemeanor charge for the minor with the possession of the firearm which yeah. was dismissed yeah yeah and so this kind of goes hand in hand with i mean we all know this like this this country has largely have dealt with um major issues of racism right and we and specifically in the last three years it has been brought to light once again I, not that it hasn't before mm-hmm. but with the whole kyle rittenhouse case it was it was kind of nuts, even when it was happening, right? It was this young man and, you know, it was hard to process because I didn't know what was going on. There was new clips being shown every day of, of people recording what was happening. Yeah. And I just, when I first saw it, 
it was obviously it's rage. Like, do yeah. I as personally as a as a human being mm -hmm. feel he should be walking away scratch free? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. He murdered two people. Mm -hmm. But now we have to go into this case and why he would he walked away without having anything well, happen to him. That's the thing, though. Like what you're talking about of getting all the correct information um, as bits and pieces of information was coming out as footage was coming out. There was a lot of irresponsibility on the side of the media uh, with a lot of bias, yeah. a lot of sensational, you know, sensationalism, sensationalizing headlines, right? So it was hard to get an objective, clear picture of what exactly had happened. But once those details did come out and anybody who followed the trial pretty closely or, or even just followed the important parts of it, it's hard to say that justice wasn't served, you yeah. know? I, in my opinion, justice was served. Now, you might not like that call. You might not like what happened, but it doesn't change from the fact, this is not about what you like or dislike. It's not about what you feel. It's not about your opinion. It's about guilty or not guilty. And beyond- the stuff that they were trying to charge you Right, for. and beyond a reasonable doubt, you can, a, a reasonable person cannot say, based on the evidence that's been presented, based on the arguments from both sides, you cannot say beyond a reasonable doubt that Kyle Rittenhouse was guilty. Yeah, so th this is the the hard part and the hard pill for a lot of us to swallow, right? Because mm -hmm. even for me, I don't like that little shit, right? Yeah. Like I I, <laughs> I, I I fucking hate that little shit, especially, yeah. you know, originally when he first was brought back over yeah. to be put into jail and he was released, he was fucking at a bar celebrating, yeah. right? He was wearing a t-shirt. I forgot what it said exactly, but mm -hmm. it wasn't exactly something that made him look like a very good fucking person, right? Yeah. Out yeah. celebrating at a, at a bar, even if it's in self-defense, you know, having killed two people. The, the the other issue that we have with this is that that a lot of people feel is the rhetoric specifically of people who are in support of him saying that he is an American hero. <laughs> right. This causes Please. so much fuel to a flame that doesn't need to be lit. <sighs> yeah. To label him yeah. as an American hero. Yeah. Like this is a true American well, blows my fucking mind. So the problem with the whole case is in a lot of situations actually uh, that we've seen in the past few years, ever since Trump came into office is everything is about political ideologies now, yeah. whether it supports it or detracts from it. And and each side is trying to figure anything they can to latch onto it. And in this yes. case, it became a thing of political ideology, yeah. right? And that's what I hate, like how it's become so black and white. It's one or the other thing. Now, the critical thinking level of people in this country is astonishing. Like the how low yeah. that level is, right? I want people to really take away from this, right? And once again, I'm already putting up the premise that I fucking hate this kid. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the idea of convicting somebody and making them guilty, you have to remember, it's beyond a reasonable doubt. And, and, and you cannot let those biases affect your yeah. your judgment in how you look at the evidence that's been presented. Yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. It doesn't matter whether or not you like this kid or what he's about. Even if this kid is racist, right? What did he do during basically everything that transpired to make him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, yeah. right? That's what I'm saying. Like people want to inject their personal opinions, their personal political ideologies, their personal thoughts into this thing and and, and make it so to support that but that's not how the law works. And we're gonna, we're, we'll obviously talk more about this when we go into the case, because yeah. there's a, a lot of fucked up shit that happened in between this that allowed mm -hmm. him to walk away scratch free, right? Mm -hmm. There's The prosecution was fucking trash. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we yeah. can get into that yeah. whole thing. There's the prosecution was fucking terrible. There was a lot, was a lot of such here. shit with the judge. There was a lot of people that were trying to intervene in terms of the outcome of the case mm -hmm. that just didn't help at all. Like trying to dox some of the, some of the, um, what do you call them? The, the jury. Uh, the jury. Try to dox yeah. the jury. Find out where they were going. Media like this. People might think that they had they were trying to do something great, but it doesn't. When people are already set with their certain ideals, let's say that they already had a, a they were supposed to be unbiased, which rarely any of us really are, right? We mm -hmm. can try our best to be, but it's it's hard. Uh, it's hard to right. Let's say there was somebody on the jury that was like, you know what? I, I truly believe that uh, he should walk away scratch free because I, I I feel like as an American, it makes more sense, right? You threatening those people saying that if you don't do as I tell you, I'm going to fucking kill you or I'm going to come after you. Right. It's not going to make them change their mind exactly. anymore. You're only proving exactly. their point. Yeah, It doesn't help. There was so many fucked up things that happened in between this mm -hmm. that people don't want to take responsibility for. For example, like media coverage, people trying to dox these people, which is fucking 
insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, especially when you want, let's say if we put it on the flip side, let's say we were there and we're supposed to be, we want these people to be as unbiased as possible, right? Mm -hmm. To kind of look at the facts and give me a fair trial. Mm -hmm. If you were in that seat, would you have, would you have accepted that type of treatment? Probably yeah. not. Yeah. You but, know, but, but you know what you just said about that, there's shit to unpack there too, because that's one of my, I guess, takeaways from this whole thing. It's like, cause you just said, if we were there, yeah, if we were on trial, we were Kyle Rittenhouse, but instead we're Kyle Kim's or Kyle Parks, right? Would we get the same kind of treatment and justice? This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals, my friends? You already know what's up with BetterHelp. I have been using BetterHelp for the longest time and I gotta tell you something, man. Still great, still awesome. And I know a lot of you have been messaging me and have been thanking me. Don't thank me, thank yourself for getting the help that you need. And if BetterHelp was the one for you, I'm glad that it helped you out like it did for me. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed because this isn't a one size fits all thing. As you guys know, sometimes when you, well, if you haven't done therapy before, sometimes you go to a therapist and something's not clicking. Well, the great thing about BetterHelp is that you can go ahead and switch that therapist if it's not working with you. So there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with this. Sometimes you just got to find one that matches. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. And in fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional therapists in all all 50 states. Visit betterhelp.com slash genius. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P and join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. A special offer for Genius Brain listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash genius. Questionable at best. Yeah. Questionable at best. As a minority, as a black, yeah. brown, yellow face on the stand with these charges against us, were we are we going to get the same kind of treatment? Yeah. The fact that it's questionable at best and not a resounding yes shows you the problems that exist in our justice system, you know? Yeah, and that's the hard thing to to kind of walk away from, right? And I think that's the part that really upsets people. Even if let's say that a lot of people understand what we're saying right now, they yeah. go, "Okay, well beyond a reasonable doubt, he's not guilty." Mhm. Mm it's hard for them to also say, well, if that person was of a different color, which yeah. is an issue that we have in this country, would they have gotten that fair treatment? Right. And I think really that's what people are upset about. Of course. Even if they agree that he was supposed to be let free, the hard part is, is that we have seen time and time again in this country, like if it was the other way around, I don't know if that would have been the case. Yes. Like, Cause yes. we saw, we saw with the case with the young lady who was, I think she was like sex trafficked or, or something like that. Right. And she, she murdered her rapist. Right. Yeah. And her then pimp. She, yeah. yeah yeah what was her name i can't remember but. i can't remember either but do you remember that case i do um yeah well she was uh, a sex life essentially she was being prostituted out by his pimp and i guess he at one point had threatened her life or something and she knew she wasn't some shit with him so she killed him she killed him and then they put her in jail and, for like 15 years yeah like, right and then we see cases like that where it's like okay how come this isn't self-defense mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. and she's of a different skin color so yeah. when we look at these cases it's hard for me as a human being or any person in this country to say like okay well this justice system is fair right so it's hard to not put our personal emotions when we see the opposite happen to somebody who is not of the same skin color yeah. as this person yeah and this is where this conversation comes where i think a lot of people were saying um i don't understand how this is a race issue when he killed Oh, he killed two white people and the other person was white as well. Yeah. It goes beyond that, right? We're talking yeah. about this case specifically for a young white man who, if it was in this position where someone, if this was a person of color, would they have gotten that same treatment? But the also issue is that is that we can't play what ifs because we don't fucking right, know. Right, right. But based on the things that we've seen happen, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's questionable at best whether or not we would get a fair treatment if you're a minority, yes. you know, with the same charges. That's why I'm saying like, it's okay to have an issue with that. It's okay to be angry with that, but that's something that's separate to this. Yes. You can't, because you feel that way about this, it's not like, you can't translate that feeling into this, you know? It, it, it's not the same. Like they can exist separately. Yeah. Like this guy was not guilty and now you're upset with the way the uh, our laws and, and he, justice system is right how i feel about it is that kyle rittenhouse is this fucking piece of shit 
that feels like he's a vigilante and he could put take justice into his own own hands mm -hmm. and he found the right loopholes that allowed him to get away scratch free. See, but I don't that like, okay, but we'll get into that yeah, part. Like, yeah. Of of the opinions of like okay. the character profiles. Yeah. Okay, so before I start reading this, there's something that I know that people want to address that I, I had to look up myself, right? Mm -hmm. So uh before the case even started, yeah. the the charge of him uh, holding onto an illegal weapon. Oh, it was it was a legal weapon, but illegal in the sense that he was a 17 year old. Yeah. Was dropped before the case started. Yeah. yeah. And the reason why is because there was legal jargon that was very confusing. That's actually left up to the judge to decide whether he could be prosecuted for it or not. Yeah. Which is the the type of weapon that we, he had and the gun. So I'll, I'll leave an article and a link that you guys could read to yourself. There's a lot of legal jargon behind it. But essentially from what I got from it is that the length of the barrel in which he had was actually categorized as deemed okay in the state of Wisconsin right. because it's deemed as a hunting rifle. Yeah. So yeah. the AR-15. The AR-15. Yeah. AR that classic hunting rifle. With the classic hunting, the AR-15, yeah. the rifle, right? <laughs> and so this is an area that's very muddled and confused, right? Um, it sets a very dangerous precedent for something in the future, right? Because the reason why that thing was set up because they didn't want young kids to be walking around with assault rifles or whatever, right? Or, or handguns. Well, because the, the law was designed for hunting. That, that that's the thing. Well, but, exactly, but it didn't yeah. cover the whole. Right, right. It, it, it's a it's a very poorly worded law. Exactly. So this is this is what I'm talking about, where it sets up a very bad precedence. Right. right. So somebody else carries an AR-15. There are 17. They go, hold on. This is actually legal for me because the the, the length of the barrel is it, it basically says that I'm not guilty of anything. Yeah, right? yeah. You you can get charged for whatever whatever for for a minor holding a, a weapon that shouldn't they shouldn't have. Yeah. But in terms of the extent of the law, it's kind of like a slap on the wrist. I guess I guess the quote unquote loophole you were talking about has to do with the fact that he was 17 and he purchased it through another guy, his friend. Illegally, yeah. An older friend yeah. who bought it, right? But then it was in Kyle Rittenhouse's possession. Right. So it was his friend's stepfather's home where the gun was at <laughs> yeah. in Kenosha, I yeah. believe. Um, now his friend is also, uh, has charges against him too. Right. But for selling a weapon to a minor or something, like, I forgot what for, it is. So yeah. that's, isn't that some weird shit though? How does that but case get he, dropped for him? But then he gets- Well, they're trying to get that case thrown out now because of that oh, because, of this precedent? because of the statute in the law. So, uh, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. So like kind of what I'm getting to this is that when these type of laws are set from what I've read, mm -hmm. it's left up to the judge. Yeah. And it's usually in the favor of somebody like Kyle Rittenhouse well, or anything else. To be fair, to be fair, if I'm recalling this correctly, the judge, the 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 prosecution tried to or the defense team tried to get that case or that charge thrown out twice previously. The judge denied it twice. Yeah. Third time though, they presented the statute, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the judge even admitted that it was confusing, the law, how this thing was worded, right? But if you do look into, so the law, if you look at the base of the law, which says, you know, a minor cannot carry a firearm, open carry a firearm, even though open carry is legal in Wisconsin. Yeah, based on that alone, he's guilty. But then, like you said, within the statute, there is, a little caveat in that law talking about the length, the length of, the of the barrel. And so it negates the base law because of that. Yeah. And so that was kind of what they used to get that charge dropped. I guess there was another little a part of it where he was with the guy that sold him the gun. Yeah. He was with him. He They were partners doing their whatever shit that they were doing. The vigilante justice. Well, I guess yeah. <laughs> what, what they argue was that he was out there because he was an EMT in training as a yeah, young yeah. intern or something. So he was out there doing quote unquote medical work. He was strapped with an AR-15. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, so, so look, there was poor judgment in a lot of, lot of uh, the situations uh, during this whole thing, yes, right? Yes. But again, that doesn't change the fact of what we're talking about is was this guy guilty or not well, guilty? We haven't even gotten to that part yeah. yet. I'm yeah. only clarifying why people are asking why he wasn't charged with holding it a, for a minor to have this, right. this weaponry, right? right? And so it was dropped because of these reasons. There was just a lot of weird legal jargon and it was left up to the judge to decide whether they were going. And there was also this talk too, where I read up in an article is like, if that was something that was left around, they kind of wanted to eliminate it. So he had no fallback. So they wanted to make sure that these charges were pressed more. Cause it's like, so, cause the fallback would be, well, let's just get him with this stuff instead of this. Well, that was the best shot that they had yeah. at, at making any charge stick. The yeah. other felony charge. Now also too, it's important to note that this 
charge for the possession of a firearm, minor with a possession of a firearm, was a misdemeanor charge. Exactly. So he wasn't going to do hard time for it, <clears throat> even if he did get charged with it. But again, I think it's important to point out that the judge denied twice for the dismissal of it. So if if people want to use that as some sort of bias, oh yeah, he's a pro Kyle Rittenhouse type of dude. Yeah, he denied it twice because I think the confusion surrounding the yeah, wording of, yeah. in the law, right? Yeah. But then I don't was, think that's the case. Like the only thing I'm, I want people to clarify is yeah. that it was very muddied, mm -hmm. and then typically, and what I've read in a couple of articles yeah. is that either way, typically it's gonna it it was gonna be for Kyle Rittenhouse or not. Yeah. So it's it wasn't something that was so clear cut. Yeah. So I think that was a detail that was left out on almost everything. Because mm -hmm. that was the thing I didn't understand. It's like, how come at least he should be charged for this, but it was dropped before the case even started. So this is where we have to start fresh. So if you guys want to read up on that, I'll, I'll link the article as to why mm -hmm. it happened that way. Mm -hmm. And then you guys can go ahead. Yeah, and you can actually yourself. look into the law itself. I read the law and the statute. It doesn't make any fucking sense. It's confusing it's, as hell. It's confusing, right? But then the statute, I could see why it was dismissed because yeah. of that statute. Because that statute mm -hmm. makes it pretty clear on basically the whole length and a minor being able to carry a firearm in that instance. Yeah. And once again, too, like I, I don't agree with it because in terms of for future cases, because it's a very dangerous precedent, right? It's not a good law. It's a, it, it's they, not, they, need, they need to rewrite yeah, that law. They, they, there needs to be a little more absolutely, specific. Absolutely. Hunting rifles not AR fit and they have to list out the guns that exactly. aren't allowed. It, it was just so generalized and stupid. And yeah. this is why it happened this way. Right. So from that point on, now yeah. you guys can figure out what happens next. Right. So, uh, I well, yeah. one more thing, Dave, before you get yeah. into it too, uh, there was also a lot of hoobla about the judge not allowing the prosecution team to refer to the deceased as victims. Right. <laughs> I, I agreed with that though. That. Yeah. I agreed with that. Cause that implies guilt. That implies that yeah. Kyle Rittenhouse is a murderer before he's been convicted of anything, right? And 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 for the sake of a fair trial, to not have any, you know, preconceived. Well, let's, let's, we we can't bring that up yet because we haven't gotten to the case. So oh, okay. you, you bring okay. that up when we start going. We're going to go with this piece by piece. Okay. Right. So I'm just reading this up from this is there's I mean there was two articles. There's one from um, CBS and ABC, and they're relatively the same. So this mm. is a non-opinion piece. This is just uh, noting what happened in the trial. Uh, so who is Kyle Rittenhouse? Rittenhouse was a se was 17 at the time. We'll skip that. We already talked about that. Um, Rittenhouse told jurors he is now studying nursing at Arizona State University. In a statement, the school clarified that Rittenhouse enrolled in online classes, but has not been admitted to the university's nursing school. He also said he had worked as a lifeguard in Kenosha and was part of an EMT cadet program where he learned CPR and basic first aid. At trial, he admitted that he falsely claimed to be a certified EMT on the night of the shooting. Yeah. Yeah, he did do that. His attorney said Rittenhouse has suffered PTSD following the shooting and is currently in therapy. So that is the general summary of who Kyle Rittenhouse is, right? Who are the victims? Um, I think this is important for people to know. Uh, Joseph Rosenbaum, 36, mm -hmm. was the first person fatally shot by Rittenhouse. The teen claims Rosenbaum chased him and grabbed his firearm before Rittenhouse shot him four times. Also, uh, Rosenbaum had just been discharged from the hospital that night. Yeah, he had, that so day. to continue, he had never physically touched Rittenhouse. Um, Rosenbaum was reportedly homeless, uh, struggled with bipolar disorder, and just that day had been released from a hospital after attempting suicide. The report said he spent years in prison for sexual contact with a minor. minor. That is who Joseph Rosenbaum is, right? right? Uh, which I guess, I don't know if that's like an... Hmm? Well, it kind of shows like the mental state of who this person was. Right. That, you that you know that him. he's mentally unstable. But the thing is, when you hear the testimony of other people who were there, it supports that because he was out there causing a lot of tension, yelling profanities. Uh, I believe he even threatened Kyle Rittenhouse. I'm going to cut your heart out, you motherfucker, or some yeah, shit like, like that. Multiple times. Like he, he called him the N word too. Yeah. Like, so he was, he was <laughs> yelling. <laughs> he was, defa <laughs> he was defacing property and doing all kinds of illegal shit. You know, so nobody knows why he was out there. Yeah. Yeah. So like there was I, no clear reason. Was, I, you know, I, and I, I think an important thing to note too is that this is not to justify his death, but it's to kind of in kind of like in case context, 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 context as to what context happened. Context matters. And, you know, once again, like we, we have to know about this context, right? Yeah. This is not to say that this person deserved to die. That is not. No, the no, 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 no. He, I guess he had spotted Rittenhouse earlier and was threatening him. I mean, obviously it's because he had an AR-15 strapped right. around him. So he right. was making these threats at him. And then um, he actually went and charged him because Rittenhouse was trying to put out a fire 
and that pissed off well this we'll, we'll get into guy. the details of like each and, one i guess yeah. once we get into the meats of it because yeah. i definitely got stuff i want to yeah. talk about there too so let's talk about anthony huber anthony huber was 26 was shot in the chest by rittenhouse born in kenosha he died four days after his birthday according to an obituary rittenhouse claims huber had kicked him in the face and struck him in the head with his skateboard the teen says he shot huber as he tried to reach for his weapon um there was footage of this yeah right yeah. so he and in court he did have a weapon he yeah. had a pistol or yeah. a gun of some no, sort no 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 right? no he didn't he didn't that that's uh gross Kruitz. that's gage gross Kruitz, the third guy ah gross yeah. Kruitz. Oh, yeah. i'm sorry so yeah. does it say anything about anthony humber in there being acquaintances with jacob blake because he was acquaintances with jacob blake and mm -hmm. and so he already had a very clear bias uh, he was a skateboard guy yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jacob Blake. I mean, I'm sorry. Huber was the skateboard guy. Yeah, yeah. and so, Jacob Blake is the reason why they were protesting, right? Yes. Yeah. Jacob Blake was the reason why they were protesting. So that's why he was out there. You know. Um. So he Jacob had, Blake was a guy who was shot multiple times by yeah the by the cops. And yes, he and was, was paralyzed. Like paralyzed. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. And so Huber. It's important to note Huber was an acquaintance with Jacob Blake, and also he doesn't have a, a very perfect um character profile either. Yeah. being in and out of prison choked his brother for 10 seconds because he wouldn't clean the room uh got locked up in prison got out kicked his sister for something got right back into prison okay. so you know this dude had mental issues it as was well. a representation of like and i think like when this information is presented and we'll obviously talk about it too is that this kind of just goes all for kyle rittenhouse to talk about the mental state of people who attacked him right because yeah. When I first heard this case, just to go back and even for me, the way they painted these people that they kind of made them seem as if they were peaceful protesters. Like saints. Saints. Yeah. And that obviously affected my opinion. Not, once again, it's not to talk about whether these people deserve to die, but we do have to paint this case truthfully yeah. with oh, the right have, brush. Again, context. Context matters. And that's why I'm saying it was so fucking like irritating how biased and and like misrepresentative <clears throat> the media was in terms of like showcasing what happened the people involved in it uh, who these people are and and look man some of these media outlets omitted important details again context right in order to favor their kind of sentiment yeah. or their opinion right so is this is it pronounced Gage? Gage. Gage yeah. Gross Kruitz. Yeah. 27 was the sole survivor of the shootings. Moments after Huber was killed, Rittenhouse shot Gross Kruitz in the arm. <clears throat> Gross Kruitz says he lost 90% of his bicep at trial. He admitted that he thought he was going to die. Rittenhouse said he reacted to seeing his handgun, which Gross Kruitz explained to the court that he pulled out because he thought Rittenhouse was an active shooter. Um, <clears throat> this was all seen. Gross Kruitz mm -hmm. did have a gun. Yes. At that um, point, was he an active shooter? No, was he wasn't. He was not never yeah. an active shooter during yeah. this whole thing. That, that, and that's, that's okay, but yeah. again, we'll get into that later. So let's yeah. talk about the charges now, right? Yeah. Count one, first degree reckless homicide, mm -hmm. use of a dangerous weapon. Count two, first degree recklessly endangering safety, use of a dangerous, dangerous weapon. Count three, first degree intentional homicide, use of a dangerous weapon. Count four, attempted first degree intentional homicide, use of a dangerous weapon. Count five, first degree recklessly endangering safety, use of a dangerous weapon. A six count possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under 18 was dropped by the judge before both sides began their closing arguments, as we explained before why. So now that you guys know that. So if convicted of the intentional homicide charge, Rittenhouse could face life in prison. Um. So that's basically kind of like the gist of what people are going for. Yeah. This is who he is. Yeah. And kind of just to clarify things, because I think a lot of us, we kind of get emotional about this stuff first and we don't ever want to read about the details because it's really heavy. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when we, some, when we want a specific outcome that we already feel is justice, we kind of steer away from information because we know a little part of us might read something that might make them seem like they're right and you're wrong. Yeah. And I'm guilty of that sometimes where I, I get scared of reading sometimes facts because I want to be right so bad yeah. that I'd rather just not read something and then justify my feelings by just the, the small facts that I already know. Yeah. Um, and it's important for us in this type of case because it's such a national thing 
because it kind of affects how a lot of people view this country to kind of read up on these details. This is a huge case. Um, Especially if you want to say something substantial about it, you yeah, know, when make sure you get all the facts yeah. and make sure you're objective about it, yeah. you know, not, not injecting bias or, 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 you know, subjectiveness into it. Like really look it's at- It's hard. It's very it hard. hard. It is hard. You know? It is hard. It is hard. But in this case where somebody else's life is- basically up in the air based on what the verdict is. I mean, look, to be fair, I think even though he got a not guilty verdict, this kid's life is ruined for the rest of his life because people are not going to be happy. There's a, It's a fact that there's a ton of people who aren't happy. I don't think happy. his life is going to be ruined. Though. I think so. I, I don't I, think so. Because I think so. Man. I think he it, could find his circle. I think here's the reason why. Yeah. It's because the where he lives and who supports him mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. He has yeah. more support than he has people who hate him. That's yeah. the sad part. His, he I would paid, say it's about 50, 50 no, at man, best, man. Because at the end of the day, the people yeah. that hate him yeah. don't live around him. Oh, okay. And well, on, that's true. Yeah. And, like his, his immediate circle. And, and on top yeah. of that too, people also have to realize too, a majority of the people who are in the hoop, like who are visibly upset about this, mm -hmm. it's only represented through Twitter Instagram and everything else, like a very small percentage of the population actually uses that a lot. Mm -hmm. We we always think that Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube is a representation of the whole, of, of the majority of the population, and it's actually not. Yeah. It's like less than ten percent. It's very small. Speaking of Twitter, um, they there was like this uh, information that came out. Like I I don't know how they got that information, put it together, but uh, they found out that the majority of the support for Kyle Rittenhouse on Twitter were coming from bot accounts from China, That's Russia. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was, it was Shout all, out to China, dude. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the digital These warfare. Motherfuckers. Yeah, they, it was the digital all just warfare. to divide us. Yeah, exactly. Like, Create yeah. more divisiveness of in the country. You um, know, because even his legal fees were paid by people in support of him, right? Like yeah. they- They raised yeah, like $2 million. They raised a shit ton of money for yeah. him, which is why his, his defense was really fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that- that is a representation like just you know, embarrass themselves yeah you know? yeah like what were you what, what was going to happen in this case too they he had the money and the backing and like once again people are calling him a political hero uh, he's not a hero yeah. of any kind i don't think there's hero he's, on any side yeah, there's this. no hero in this it's as if like a bunch of dumbass batmans all got together didn't know who was the good guy or the bad guy and they all started this shit Exactly. And they all got caught and they all got put on trial. Yeah, but the, you no. know, the whole case, man, just shows how politically divided the country is. And to be honest, I don't think it needed to get as polarizing as it, as it became, yeah. but it just shows you, man, like people, it, this tribe mentality, you know, if you're of a certain tribe, it's like, you gotta hate the other side and like, again, latch onto whatever you can to support your own in this case, political ideologies and, and ideas and thoughts and all of that shit. And it's just like, that's an interesting thing too. Like, I wonder how many times I can say this and also a lot of other people who are part of social media and understand how this engine runs. I don't know how many fucking times I can tell people that social media isn't real. Like you have to understand, <laughs> not just in like people who use it, but as yeah. we just said, a yeah. majority of the people that were tweeting things in support of Kyle Rittenhouse were fucking bots, bots from China. Against yeah. uh, against countries that we don't exactly have the best relations exactly. with. <laughs> and by the way, this isn't some type of hearsay. Yeah. This is proven. This is fact. And people don't find that alarming. Yeah. They don't think like, oh, this is an issue. They're like, oh, but he's still a piece of shit. No, let's go back to this for a second, right? Yeah. It's like, do you understand why there are so, there's so much progress with other countries, like specifically talked about like China's progress, right? Like yeah. right now compared to ours is because they're doing a great job of fucking conquering and dividing us right now. Yeah. It's so, And we always talk about this, this, this idea of um, what it is to be an American. They go, oh, we have a sense of unity here. No, we fucking don't. No. My definition of American is vastly different from a lot of other people in this country. Yeah. We don't have this sole identity of what it is to be an American citizen. We don't. Yeah. I would argue we're more divided than ever, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, <clears throat> and a lot of it is thanks to Trump because the Republican Party right now, well, I, I'm not going to say in, in its entirety, but some some core Republican people just literally are like the fucking joker. They just want to watch the world yeah. burn. Just, they don't care as long yeah. as they win. As long as they win, as long as they maintain power, as long as they're able to get what they want, they're willing to say and do anything, which is absolutely fucking disgusting. It's it's kind of, it's, it's really sad too. Like I honestly feel like in my personal opinion that if you're in 
like high political power, you should not be able to have a social media account. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just too dangerous. You know, yeah. it's it's so fucking dangerous well, too. Because like, because like, you know, with the obviously because of how you know former President Trump portrayed himself and the things that he said and the things that he did. Now we're left with an invalid as a president, Biden. Yeah. Like this guy is barely awake. <laughs> but would you rather accept someone who is able-bodied to tweet for him, or the crazy man himself to to? Well, I just be don't think they should be able to tweet account. at all. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely it was nothing. The, again, pick your poison situation, because then we'll see who really gives a fuck about uh, politics and the state of this country in terms of what these people are about. Because now you have to do the effort and do your own research mm -hmm. aside from the stuff that Twitter says, right? Aside from their these little blurbs and bleeps, oh, but it's not ever going to change the fact that misinformation is going to spread like wildfire, you but, know. And and it's also the way it's portrayed. I mean, look at the twenty four hour news, you know, TV shows like how they're programmed and how they're presented. Yeah, they're a fucking sports center. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, it's I highlights. Know. I know, I you know, know? I it's know. it's like dun dun dun, dun breaking <laughs> fucking news. Everything's yeah. breaking. Yeah, the amount of breaking news we have in the United States is like holy shit. For when real. is it? When is? But when do you guys ever chill? That's why it's like I I was hoping when Biden got elected that you know things would be a lot bo more boring again. It's not. You know, if politics was boring, you'd get a lot more shit done. Mm -hmm. I swear to God. But yeah. then. You know what? A lot more people get involved because it's news has become a sports cast now. Yeah. You know, they take all their cues from Sports Center. And and there's because of that, there's I mean, so much hate against each side. You know, if you're on one side, you just hate everything about that other side. There's no yeah. common ground, it seems like. You know no, what I mean? You know, and I think everybody's kind of coming to the uh obviously we're sidetracking a little bit, but just to kind of top us off is everybody's coming to the realization that with this lax election, nobody won. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is we all lost. lost. We all lost. And nobody got the president they wanted. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. You know, I mean, did anyone really want a fucking demented, like 90 year old man <laughs> to be president? And, you know, like, and, and we talked about- you want a 90 year old man to be the CEO of your company? Yeah, you know, yeah. like- yeah. We also talked about this too on the podcast multiple times that saying that the reason why I'm voting for this president is because it's better than this guy. Yeah. It's kind of dangerous. And we talked about that I too. Know, and know. a lot of people didn't agree. I they know. didn't think so. They're like, it's going to get better. But how? How is having somebody who had two fucking brain surgeries, doesn't know where he's at. Like, honestly, if he if he drank a bottle of water on TV, you would see it dribble out the other side of his mouth. <laughs> well, I think his current approval ratings reflect yeah. people's yes. sentiment about, you know, about how they feel. Yeah. So anyway, let's move on to the next question. Yeah, let's what, get into meats of it, man. What, what was captured on video? Each shooting was captured on video. The civil unrest in Kenosha was heavily documented the night of the shootings and the digital media, including footage, has helped investigators and Rittenhouse defense team establish a timeline of events in the jury. So videos of the shootings from bystanders and videographers played a major role in the blah, 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 blah. Right. So other videos show Rittenhouse fleeing after shooting Rosenbaum and a crowd of people pursuing him, some yelling, beat him up. Hey, get him. He shot him, yeah. get him, get that dude. Yeah. Prior to the second shooting, Rittenhouse says he tripped and fell to the ground. Yep. Video shows him down on the street, at which point Huber tried to take his gun before Rittenhouse shot and killed him. Yeah. Cell phone video shows Rittenhouse walking away from the scene and, to and towards police vehicles with his hands raised. Yeah. Shortly after Rittenhouse shot a third victim, um, Gagey? Uh, Gage. Gage yeah. Grosskreutz in yeah. the arm. Grosskreutz was holding a handgun at the time he was shot. Rittenhouse's lawyers claim he acted in self-defense. Yeah. So, okay, let's get into the meat of this now since you broke that part down. So basically, yeah. here's the timeline, right? And um, I, I'm pretty sure that I, I have the details accurate here. But if I'm wrong, you guys can fact check me on this. But basically, um, yeah, uh, Rittenhouse, his, his first... Um, kind of moment with with one of the people who were killed was Rosenbaum, right? Yeah. Now, he's getting chased, right? And Rosenbaum throws his bag of clothes at Rittenhouse that he had, because he was discharged from the hospital. Yeah, it was like a bag of socks. Right, it was like a shit. bag of cl his clothing items, right? Just, just socks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just so, like 80 pairs of yeah. socks. <laughs> he, he, he knows he's being chased yeah. by this guy who's, who's basically, yet, who's already threatened him previously, right? So he has his back turned to him. Kyle has his back turned to him. This guy's chasing him. He throws something at him. Somebody fires off two shots, I believe. Mm. Now, you put yourself in Rittenhouse's shoes. You have your back turned. Somebody who's hostile against you is chasing you. And you hear gunshots 
very closely behind you. Is it safe to assume that he thinks his life is in danger? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I would. Right? Also, too, I, I also want to note that, you know, when it comes to the stuff that we're saying, um, I have yet to read something from anybody mm -hmm. that refutes this. Mm -hmm. So nobody has come out saying like, no, actually Kyle Rittenhouse had a gun and tried to shoot well, him. Well, it's impossible so, because there's video evidence. Well, exactly. So yeah. like, but even if people mm -hmm. had that thing in their head, they're yeah. like, oh, according to whose account? Right. There's a video. There's a, <laughs> yeah. there's if, a video. Look, if they don't want to believe that no matter how much evidence and facts that are out there, You're they kind won't. kind of lost yeah. Yeah, at that point. So, so yeah. okay, that's, that's leading up to now Rosenbaum lunging at him and trying to get physical with him, right? Then Kyle Rittenhouse fires off his shots, right? Now, moving on after he 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 shoots him, um, he runs out into the streets. And while he's running in the streets, like you mentioned in the article, people are yelling, get him, you know, uh, he's he has a gun, whatever, right? Yeah. Now, nobody knows though at that point who they're referring to because it's chaos in the streets. It's not like people are pointing like this, everyone's saying, get him, he's the guy, right? Kyle Rittenhouse is running, but there's a lot of other people running as well in the streets. And now Kyle Rittenhouse is being chased and this kid trips. There's an assailant who didn't get shot, who actually kicks him in the head first yeah. when he falls. Kyle lets off a shot while he's on the ground. It's not like he had the gun pointed at him. He gets hit, then he fires off a shot. He misses that guy. The guy disappears out of the frame, right? He got away unscathed. Then Anthony Huber comes in with the skateboard, hits him, uh, I believe kicks him, and then he grabs his rifle. Tries to take his gun, but while he's trying to take the gun, Kyle's able to get a shot off. That shot happens to be a fatal wound to the chest, right? Again, it wasn't an aimed shot. It was in the heat of the moment. He let off that shot. Boom, that guy collapses to the floor. And then now, uh, Grosskreutz, he's the only survivor who gave the testimony. He comes in the frame. Now, he puts his hands up like this. While Kyle Rittenhouse is on the floor, he has his gun pointed at him. And then all of a sudden he puts his hand down and points his gun at Kyle Rittenhouse. That's when Kyle fires the shot off. So now at none of these points, if you look at all the video evidence that's out there, was there any clear sign of provocation by Kyle Rittenhouse? Yeah. yeah. He was trying to avoid conflict. He was trying to run away suddenly saying friendly, friendly. He was trying to protect himself. He just had a gun to do it. Yeah. Now, again, for the people who are listening, who might not be happy with the verdict, Put yourself in his shoes in these moments. You have a gun. You got people trying to attack you. You have assailants coming after you. You can realistically fear for your life yeah, in that moment. A legit mob. Right. And, and the hard attack. part is right. for, for people too, is that what I know everybody wants to say is he shouldn't have been there in the first place. The other people shouldn't have either. And yeah. 100% true. But the fact of the matter is he was there. So we can't talk about the what ifs. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was there and right. so were they right so to say he shouldn't have been there in the and by the way i'm guilty of this too because when this case first came out i was just riled up with emotions yeah and i didn't get to take a look at this for what actually happened and obviously there wasn't the the, the data that we have now wasn't there mm -hmm. right and i clearly jumped the gun once again i'm not saying i like this kid yeah you don't have to i'm talking about what happened yeah. here right yeah. And at the end of the day, when I look at it and I looked at those multiple videos, we saw all the angles. He didn't provoke these people. Not at all. Not at all. But And once again, to say he shouldn't have been there in the first place yeah. doesn't allow for you to convict him as guilty. Right. It's not going to work like that in right. court. Yeah. It doesn't work like, like how that. How are you going to control that yeah. at mm -hmm. all? Yeah. Like even on the other side, Rosenbaum, how are you going to let a crazy man join your protest? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. How are you yeah. going to stop that? Yeah. And, and by literally the way, getting discharged and from the hospital. Too, once again, if you were in just not his place, let's just let's take that part out, right? Because the the audience, I wouldn't be like him. Fine, you are going to be judged in court for whatever thing, right? And the only defense for the 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 prosecution comes with, well, you shouldn't have been there in the first place, and they go guilty. You're right. Take him out of there. <laughs> would you would right. be like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's right. Like the whole idea yeah. of the trial is because he was there. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. Exactly. And, and, and look, let's let's close out the series of events that that transpired is after he shoots Gross Kruitz, he shoots him in the arm, right? He doesn't kill him. He gets up. He starts running towards the police with his hands up, uh, the, the gun at his waist, basically saying, I was involved in a shooting. You know, I, I shot somebody. 
Does that look like the body language and behavior of somebody who was out for a killing spree? Yeah. That that was out to fucking kill these people, like willingly surrendering? Because the cops have no idea what happened at that point. Yeah. He willingly went up to them, telling them, but the cops didn't arrest him until the next day. Yeah. Right. Well, I, so apparently he walked up to them and one cop pepper sprayed him. <laughs> oh, he got and pe he got pepper sprayed and they told him to go home. So he was like, "What the fuck?" Okay. He tried to turn himself in. Yeah, right yeah, he there. did. He did try to turn They're himself like, in. They're like, "Get out of here!" Yeah, they pepper sprayed him. Oh, I didn't know about the pepper spray. <laughs> so he went home. That's yeah. why he went home. Yeah, he they told him to go. They home. told him to go home. Yeah, I knew like, they told him to go the home. Out right? of here. <laughs> he got pepper sprayed. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I'm not supposed to lie. That's pretty fucking hilarious. I'm trying to do the right thing. Get out of here! Go home. Go, go fucking hell! You're breaking curfew. <laughs> which, by the way, was supposed to be one of the charges right, which right. they dropped as yeah, well. Yeah, because I mean, you know. Everybody was breaking but, curfew. But, yeah. but look, man, basically, you can't go into a chaotic situation and not expect chaotic things to yeah. happen. That's just foolish. Yeah. When I participated in the BLM movements, I went out there with pure intentions to be part of a peaceful protest, you know, get this agenda up on the map and whatever, show my support. But- in the back of my head, I knew at any point some shit can pop off. Yes. Cops can come. I could get pepper sprayed. I could get into an altercation with some of these rioters or looters if they showed up. Because I did have that intention. I was like, if I see a rioter, rioter or looter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to intervene, you know? So I didn't go into it thinking, oh, it's going to be all, you know, peachy and rosy. I, I, like, I'm like, yeah, I, I'm here for a peaceful protest, but I'm also... Fully you expecting. went to a nice part of it. When I went to that protest, yeah. I, I came in. I had to park hella far because yeah. obviously it was kind of crazy. Yeah. When I came in, I saw a car burn. I yeah. left. I'm like, this? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. 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 You know? When there was that big one on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. yeah. Like, apparently it was supposed to be in K-Town 2, like, meeting up at Hollywood. And when I heard that, I actually had a panic attack because, you know, the 92 rides, my family lost yeah. fucking everything. Right, right, right. I drove my ass to K-Town so fucking fast and like I was crying. Like I, I had this crazy panic attack. Like I don't want to see that shit happen again. Yeah, yeah. And same deal. Like yeah. I was going there because I'm going to go to my Hanani's house and I need to protect her. Yeah. So if anything fucking happens, yeah. I'm on my toes. It's exactly. All I, could, I don't have a gun. Yeah, I know. That's all I can do is like, I'm going to be prepared. But yeah. thank God when I got there, the National Guard was already protecting yeah. K-Town. Yeah, yeah. But like I get it. Like, if you're walking into that situation knowingly, you're right. You if you <laughs> you have to be on your toes. Right. Something could Absolutely. happen. Absolutely. And I do want people to be clear. If you are somebody who is at home sitting on the couch talking about how you would feel if you were in that situation, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, dude. Yeah. Like I went to a total of three protests. Two of them were nice. One of them wasn't. Right. The feel even at the nice protests, I felt really uneasy. Mm -hmm. When you see a car burning in front of you and you see people screaming at the top of their lungs, throwing shit, yeah. your your spidey senses are up. Yeah. You don't feel safe at all. You start sweating. It's it's a different fucking feeling. Yeah. And to to talk about what you would have done when you have never been in those type of situations, it's very presumptuous of you, right? And it's scary. Yeah. It's it's actually fucking frightening. Right. So you know? now imagine that environment and people actually coming to attack you. Yes. When you're trying to avoid conflict. Yeah. Now, if I if California had an open carry law, you best damn believe I would have had my gun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not I'm not bringing that gun necessarily with the intention to use it on somebody, but some but shit might pop off. If some shit does pop off and I have to use it to protect myself, reasonably protect myself, then I will. Yeah. N not cuz I want to kill somebody, not cuz I want to hurt somebody, but it's like if you're trying to hurt me or if you're trying to even kill me, and it's me or you. I then, find it you hilarious know? that they pepper sprayed him and told him to go. Yeah, I, didn't know. I, I missed that. Detail. I did not know that detail. Yeah, well, let's let's, let's move up. on to the next part. So right. we're going to talk about the, or I'm going to read about uh, what the prosecutors were trying to do. Mm. Uh, the prosecution attempted to. <laughs> He's fucking clowns. Yeah. Oh, we'll man. That. The prosecution attempted to discredit the core of his defense by questioning why a teenager who possessed an AR-15 style rifle would feel that his life was in danger. Thomas Binger, the lead prosecutor, tried to depict Rittenhouse as an armed threat, citing witness accounts who claimed the teen raised his gun in the direction of others throughout the night. You're telling us that you felt you were about to die, right? But when you point the gun at someone else, that's going to make them feel that they're about to die, right? That's what you wanted him to feel, uh, Binger said. Uh, 
Flustered and on the verge of tears, Rittenhouse claimed one of the victims could have run away instead of trying to take his gun. Prosecutors introduced a drone video showing Rittenhouse shooting Joseph Rosenbaum at close range after Rosenbaum had followed the teen. The footage depicted the clearest images yet of the event that set in motion the bloodshed that followed. Prosecutors brought forward several witnesses, including Dominic Black, a friend of Rittenhouse's who faced his own trial for buying the 17-year-old an AR-15 style rifle he wasn't old enough to legally possess. He testified that Rittenhouse called him seconds after the first shooting, saying, I shot somebody, I shot somebody. He described Rittenhouse as freaking out and really scared. However, some of the government government's witnesses may have been more helpful to the, to the defense strategy that anticipated. Martin Howard, a Kenosha police detective, testified that Rittenhouse shouted, friendly, 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 as he was being chased by Rosenbaum and agreed with the defense's character, characterization that their confrontation appeared to look like the classic ambush. Prosecutors made extensive use of the footage from the shootings during their closing arguments. Let me tell you so, something about the prosecution. Real I mean, quick. Al already off the bat, <laughs> yeah. when you see this, yeah. it seems that everything they brought forward didn't work for them. No, yeah. <laughs> they said about Rosenbaum that they would have probably prosecuted him if he was alive. Oh, that God. was the prosecution. So it's like you're not doing yourself any favors here, bro. What are you trying to do? Did you forget whose side you're on right now? Like, so this is the thing too that I was so just irritated about is from what Krusty the Clown fucking legal team did they get this guy from? No, that's the Wisconsin's district attorney. Best. Yeah, Wisconsin's that's, <laughs> yeah, dude, that's sideshow Bob here. Yeah, <laughs> you know. It's you know that's that's state. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's the state, man. Yeah. <laughs> that shit, I, like even when you read this article, they talked about oh they they brought one of the cops in and it turned out to work for the defense. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. actually he was saying friendly, friendly, friendly. What you, they're like, okay, well hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> wait what? Yeah, wait, 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 wait what? That's not what you were supposed to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even the gauge dude. Even they had a big, he had a big moment on the stand too, right? Yeah. yeah. When he admitted he fucking pointed a gun yeah, at him. So he was trying to initially not bring that detail into the picture. But yeah. when he was asked point blank, you know, he's like, yeah, yes, I, I did. A gun at I, I did point the gun at him. So, you know, it, it, look, the prosecution team were fucking clowns for sure. Like trying to link Call of Duty, like questioning Kyle Rittenhouse, you play Call of Duty, right? They were trying to use that to basically paint Jeez. this guy as a vigilante looking for blood. They're painting him like as if he was a school shooter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. No, no, that's exactly how they were trying to paint him. But look, the media were fucking guilty of that shit too. Yeah. They were trying to paint this kid. Now, again, it doesn't matter whether or not you like him what, uh, based on what you know about him. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it's give him his fair trial with the details and the facts. Yeah. So this Dude. guy, this kid might be an incel, but he wouldn't shoot up a school now. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. But if Call of Duty is the pre prerequisite to be a mass killer, oh boy, man. Oh, all of us we are, are in trouble, man. Yeah. So, I mean, so the prosecution at this point, um, they're, you know, what they're always going to try to do is put in question his character as a human being, right? And ugh, God, one of the most hilarious things that I read was they brought in question, I, I believe it was either his Instagram or or Twitch handle. He was like, your Twitch handle is uh, four doors more whores, right? Yes. <laughs> 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 yes. What is this product? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you Starfucker69? Because yeah. <laughs> what they're trying to do is make him look like a piece of shit. Yeah, but that they, doesn't really do much. They, they were also trying to paint him as kind of like a white supremacist like yeah. saying that he was holding up white supremacist signs so and photos that, that and was shit. at the at the bar right right at the bar so i'm not sure what happened first like so he got a big fundraiser and got bailed out right yes and then <laughs> immediately went to a bar with the proud boys you guys know who the proud boys are yeah yeah, yeah. right well i mean they're a bunch of fucking incel loser ass white dudes who racist feel like they're, who are led by a minority yeah a white supremacist led by a fucking puerto rican i believe yeah <laughs> they, they feel like they're losing this country and that white men need to step up or some shit like that i mean it's all under like undertoned yeah but generally it's a white power thing so that's when he did the okay sign yeah but apparently that's supposed to be the new white right power right symbol. what uh, this Honestly, also means you get punched too yeah. <laughs> you know like kids do this shit all the time I, yeah. I didn't know that yeah because i do okays all the time yeah so i didn't know like if, especially yeah. when i'm driving yeah. somebody wants to go through i go 
Yeah. yeah. Well, like, you fucking racist. Yeah. Like, apparently, the three here is yeah. white. Is W for white. Yeah. Oh. White power. Oh. White. Power. Oh. oh, white. You know, oh, but here's the thing. Oh, white. If if all right, written house after the verdict and everything. Now he, the interview was with Fox News. Fox News with Tucker Carlson. Oh, God, I news. fucking hate Tucker Carlson. But yeah, written house came and said, "Look, man, I'm not a racist. I support the BLM movement." <laughs> Would a white supremacist go on record? of saying on Fox News yeah. at that. Yeah. Yes, I support the BLM That's kind of rough. movement. From, from all everything that I've read at yeah. so far, it yeah. didn't seem like he was there being a counter protester. No. He was there trying to put trying out to, fires yeah. and like doing his He's EMT. He's on record to actually helping people. Yeah. Through, like the yeah. Lady he just was had a fucking assault rifle on him. He's a fucking know? dweeb. That's why I've said a fucking dumbass Batman out yeah. there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, the fuck he, are you got, doing? he got bullied when he was younger and he actually dropped out of high school and all that. So maybe he's a little socially awkward too. Who knows? But that, oh, again. shit. So he could have been a school shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was going to be a school shooter. Yeah. But yeah. that day I wasn't. Yeah. See, God and this is, this is the hard pill for a lot of people to swallow follow right yeah i'm saying i'll keep saying this throughout the podcast fucking me too like i but but i can't deny the things that i'm reading and also seeing yeah yeah it's just as a human being i can't do that because once again if we do want the justice system to be fair just because it didn't work out the way that you wanted to doesn't mean that it wasn't fair right given the law and the evidence and the the circumstances yeah yes so let's go into what the attorney says the shootings were in self-defense. This is his attorney's, right? So this mm-hmm. is the defense. Yeah. The defense argues Rittenhouse acted in self-defense. They had a witness who spoke to the timeline of events in an attempt to give credibility to Rittenhouse's claims. He felt threatened and another who was present that night and referred to those protesting police brutality as violent rioters and Antifa. The defense called several witnesses over two and a half days, including Rittenhouse, who was given the opportunity to tell his side of the story. Uh, Rittenhouse described the moments leading up to his interaction with Joseph Rosenbaum, the first man he shot and killed, and depicted Rosenbaum as the aggressor who ambushed him. The defense claimed Rosenbaum made verbal threats against Rittenhouse's life, an accusation the state disputes, saying he had no means to carry out his threat. So he still threatened him. Mm. Um, Yeah, I think that much is pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah, that he was threatened in all the situations, yeah. all so, the altercations. Rittenhouse said he did not notice Rosenbaum until he ran out from behind the car. At that point, Joshua Ziminski, who has since been charged with disorderly conduct, stepped forward toward stepped toward him with a pistol in his hand, causing Rittenhouse to drop the fire extinguisher he was holding and making him take a step back. Yeah. Over his shoulder, Rittenhouse said he saw Rosenbaum running from the side, right side saying he was cornered. Rittenhouse recalled how he felt he needed to run away from Rosenbaum after seeing him gaining speed in Rittenhouse's direction with his arms out. I didn't want to have to kill Mr. Rosenbaum, Rittenhouse said. When asked why he continued firing after the first shot, he said, I continued to shoot until he was no longer a threat to me. Rittenhouse claimed he wanted to turn himself into the police, but a mob began chasing him. As he was running, Rittenhouse encountered Huber, who he says struck him in the back of the head with his skateboard, which we saw in the video. Uh, After uh, falling to the ground, Rittenhouse said a group of people surrounded him and he pointed his gun toward them. Huber did not back off and Rittenhouse claims Huber kicked him in the face and then struck him in the neck with his skateboard. Rittenhouse claimed Huber reached for his weapon when he fired uh, one shot into his chest. Shortly after that, the teen said he then lowered his weapon and spotted Grosskreutz. He said he noticed that Grosskreutz had a pistol in his hand and shot him once in the arm. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, we we discussed all these points, you know, but... Yeah, it's not like Rittenhouse was fucking going on a rampage, just emptying clips on people, you know? Yeah, yeah. and I, the media did a really good job of influencing me too, and I felt that he was this guy looking for fucking trouble. Yeah. yeah. Um, you thought he was a crazy kid, right? Like the way just, everything was yeah, kind of yeah, like a bloodthirsty crazy kid who had a gun and he was out there looking for to take lives, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, dude, it actually surprises me for a kid that young how measured he was in his ability to only fire off one shot or two. Cause he, he was in panic mode, right? Yeah. So he could have easily let off, you know, like multiple shots just out of panic, but how measured he was in just only getting off what he saw was necessary or what he thought was necessary in the given moment yeah. is, is yeah. surprising to me. So um, is that covering the part where he, he has that panic attack and starts crying? 
Oh, that's when he's on on the stand. Oh, that was on the stand. So yeah, that's another thing, right? Is dude like the comment sections on the video on YouTube for that? They're just fucking clowning this guy. I'm like, dude, I kind of actually feel yeah, bad for I the feel kid, bad man. Because like, is that the reaction of a fucking bloodthirsty killer? No, that's PTSD. A panic, yeah, panic attack from PTSD. As this guy's recounting what happened. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I know, actually feel bad. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like a lot of celebrities uh tweets about it yeah. <laughs> lebron's <laughs> specifically lebron's like, i didn't see a single ah, tear LeBron. But, but lebron got roasted super yeah. hard yeah. they're like hey he's like listen this guy is the biggest fake crier in all the nba yeah. <laughs> so he could he could cite fake crying like nobody else yeah but yeah. you know like when i look at that and i look at it over a couple of times i'll be real i giggled a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and, then the, and then you know i giggled a little bit and the second part second part i was like uh, i'm an 18 year old about to be put in jail for life i would freak the fuck out yeah, yeah. and it did look like a crazy panic attack yeah um yeah i only say that because i've had my own panic attacks yeah, yeah. and i don't cry but i freak the fuck out yeah no, you, dude you could tell this too was fucking freaking out bro like he, i wouldn't even be able to stand stand there i'd be like what the fuck? yeah he couldn't even get a word out anymore you know yeah. but but look with this with this whole incident um and people thinking like anthony huber thinking that he was an active shooter because people were yelling you know get him whatever he has a gun critical thinking skills here guys both can be true anthony huber could have realistically thought that he was an active shooter and tried to stop him and kyle rittenhouse could have realistically thought or reasonably thought i would say that he was an assailant trying to harm him or even kill him and trying things to, can be true at once and i just talked about this on the podcast true with Ed. at once yeah. exactly this this is why i like look at our humanity like we are a bunch of fucking monkeys when it comes down to <laughs> it you know like can you imagine like this like as as if we're all caveman chimps you know yeah. like mm. when when the shit goes down you go to your primal instincts mm -hmm. and it's just this war of different monkey clans coming at each Absolutely, other dude, and like look, gun 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 they gotta get the dude, guy with the gun no, right like yeah that's but that's, they didn't know who he was right in our dna bro self-preservation is what dates back to our beginning yeah. right that's 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 how we're programmed and so if somebody or something is threatening that then our reaction is is gonna be all right. Also, too, I gotta live. Yeah. You know, based on the the characterization of a couple of the people who were killed, mm -hmm. um, who's also to say that those people didn't say active shooter because they wanted him to get fucking killed too, to get fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You they know? they wanted him to get hurt. They wanted him to get yeah. hurt. Maybe not killed, but to get hurt. Yeah, at the very yeah. least, get so hurt. Let's say he didn't have a gun and he was there doing his EMT thing. A crazy guy like. Rosenbaum could have went after him anyway. Yeah. Because yeah. he was already upset at him for yeah. putting out a fire. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what would have happened then? If he didn't have a gun, then he would have got the shit kicked out well, of him. Rosenbaum right? was already creating tension with people Everybody. out there. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. he oh, was yeah. yelling at people. And, you know, so again, nobody knows what his purpose for being out there was. Um, but you want to talk about anybody looking for trouble. That guy <laughs> seemed yeah. like he was looking, he was for, looking trouble. for trouble, yeah. you yeah. know? So closing arguments. So closing ar arguments took place Monday with lawyers on the two sides, each getting two and a half hours to present their arguments. Judge Bruce Schroeder uh, then informed the jury that they are charged with weighing the evidence and implored them to return just and true verdicts. After breaking for the night, the jury returned to begin deliberations Tuesday morning. The panel of 18 jurors who heard the case was winnowed down to 12 who will decide the verdict seven women and five men after their numbers were placed on pieces of paper in a lottery uh, tumbler in the courtroom and rittenhouse himself picked six pieces of paper that were used to identify the alternate uh jurors mm. and that's all that was written at the time for this yeah. so you know hearing all this stuff it's it's kind of hard to process right it's just so much shit that happened but there was just weird i mean when we read a lot of the, like these media articles too right i think Clearly, a lot of the stuff that I'm reading that's presented to me because I think the scenes that, that I tend to look at specifically in comedy tends to be a lot more liberal. So things are going to be fed to me that way through yeah, Facebook. Yeah, through right? a liberal so, lens. So a lot of the stuff that was pointed out was 
uh, trying to discredit the judge. Um, oh yeah, that that definitely was happening. I mean, there was definitely a few weird. I mean, he things. was a fucking weirdo. He was a sure. fucking weirdo. You know, like, like his cell phone went off, and it was. Like, I'm proud to be an <laughs> American. American. Yeah. <laughs> also, too, um, him making everybody stand and give a oh, round of applause Veterans uh, Day. for Veterans Day <laughs> yeah. to one of the people that was going to be a part of the defense for Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you thinking? What do you think people are going to take from that, you jackass? Yeah. You know, so he was a really fucking weird. He was a weird. He was a weird guy so for sure. Weird. He was a weird guy, but I I don't think that it prevented him from doing his job. You know. Yeah. He, it's not about what it prevented him from doing his job. Is we've already learned time and time again that public perception is very important in keeping calm with with the public. Yeah. Like what the fuck are you thinking? You're a judge. Conduct yourself properly. You, you can do a that, great job. Yeah, yeah. Keep that shit out of the courtroom. Yeah. Like, yeah. Isn't that your job too? Like, <laughs> like, put yourself <laughs> yeah. in contempt. He made everybody <laughs> fucking give this guy a round of applause. Bro, you're a uh, judge. Do that after. Yeah. You give him a round of applause. Yeah. What's that going to look like to the fucking public? Yeah. You did no justice for anybody in that sense. Yeah. In terms of what it looks like to the public. Because mm. people are looking for anything. And he's still deciding to do the stupid shit. Like even him making like the, the fucking the, the Corona joke. Like the Chinese food joke or whatever. That nah. It's like, why do this here, dude? <laughs> yeah. People, are, they're yeah. looking to discredit you any type of way. No, for why sure. would you for do sure. this? It was poor judgment. <laughs> Iron. Pun intended. Oh, jeez. Yeah. This guy Just is the, so weird. Yeah. Imagine but, someone else's phone went off in there. Yeah. Like, fuck Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's like, no Whose like, phone was that? Yeah. Yeah. Be, yeah. Nobody's supposed to have their phone on in there, right? Yeah. No. So I, why the fuck assume. did his phone go off? Yeah. It just it just was so I'm saying this this whole shit was so weird. It's like what the fuck was he thinking too? It was, and it like was. um there was another thing with MSNBC, like they got kicked out of the courtroom. Yeah. Because they fucking followed the jury to their hotel. Yeah. And shit. But like, that that's their bad. You yeah. know, like that's clearly their bad. Yeah. I I also read how um, a couple of the jurors were seen to be crying or visibly upset and they were just super fucking pissed that this is how they had to judge it you yeah, know, and come yeah, with a yeah. verdict. Apparently they were just really mad at the prosecution. Right. I'm sure that for them too, you know, that the emotions are running high, but they're trying for the for the sake of the case, put those emotions yeah, aside which, and make an objective decision. Which they did. Yeah, they which did. It shows they did. You yeah, know, they, they did. Went, beyond their emotions, even though it did upset them. Yeah, they, yeah. Like, yeah. Look, again, man, it's important to point out just because you uh, can accept like the the verdict that, that was handed down, doesn't mean you have to like it, you know? Yeah. Doesn't yeah. mean that you have to like it. You can even feel very strongly about it, but it was based on the laws of Wisconsin. I mean, um, um, fuck, I'm blanking here. Kenosha? Kenosha. Kenosha. Uh, yeah, 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 Kenosha, Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was Wisconsin. I don't know yeah. if I, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> even a brain fart. But yeah, it was based on the their laws, uh, their gun laws. And so what bothers me, I guess, is me saying that it was the right call and I, I'm looking at it objectively, groups me in with these fucking fringe far right groups, you know, these cuckoo heads, right? Yeah. I'm not that though. I'm just a reasonable person who has critical thinking skills and can look at the evidence and be like, you know what? The right call was made yeah. here. Yeah, and I, I think only, you know, like serious boneheads would see this as a win, you know, kind of thing. I don't think anybody fucking wins. This is bad for everyone. <laughs> people but, died. But, but yeah. bro, the people on the right are using it to for their political exactly. agenda. And like those you know? people too. It's just for them to come out and say, you know what? He is a true political hero. He's an American hero. What in the fuck in do you sense? think you're doing? In what sense? Yeah. yeah. How is he a hero? He's what a, makes him a fucking hero? The kid's a fucking moron. Yeah. There are no heroes in this. This is exactly what Watchmen is about. You oh, know, yeah. Watchmen is about a bunch of crazy, like, morons who put on costumes who want to be superheroes and bad shit happens to them. Mm -hmm. You know, essentially. Right, I, I, right, You know, right. on the overlying theme yeah. of the whole story. Yeah. You know, it's like, how far off are we as a society like that? Yeah. Where this kid, you know, like, where he's going to go be an emt or whatever yeah. out there yeah <laughs> but i'm gonna take my ar-15 with me that's some weird fucking pyongshin it, it, batman it, it is, shit. it's very stupid and, and again poor judgment and he's young so obviously he's yeah. you know gonna yeah, make stupid right. decisions right. but what my takeaway from this case is 
One, yeah, the gun laws in America, especially what in certain states, are very problematic. They're gonna have right? to redo that shit. It, it, well, that's you know that's something that's been talked about for years in this country, right? With all the fucking mass shootings here and killings with that. That's one takeaway from it. And two is my concern is that even though I think this was the right call, the precedent it might set for people who do want to you know do like be a vigilante. And and be out there and, and do mm. these things because I don't think that was Rittenhouse's intention. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, no. oh, that's the shit show it's turned into, right? Yeah, is that now people who are the counter protesters like, fuck yeah, I can take my gun to <laughs> yeah. the next BLM and I can protest. kill these people, yeah. you know, and I could I could be you know let go of that's, these charges. That's how they fucking see it now. Yeah, that's that's, sure. that's my concern, you yeah. know. But again, it's like yeah. those are the laws. Yeah, and I think you know, just to wrap that that we talked about in the podcast is, you know, beyond just that, people are also very upset because they can't help, specifically the black community can't help but feel in these cases, like if that, if Kyle Rittenhouse was a black kid, Absolutely. would he have gotten away Absolutely. with this as well? Would he, would he have gotten the same not the guilty treatment. verdict? And <laughs> would he have been pepper sprayed? Yeah. <laughs> no, they would have <laughs> shot his yeah. ass. Yeah. If, if he had exactly. AR-15, they probably would have shot, yeah. shot him. And would he have told him just go home? Yeah. Once, but this is how I feel. And yeah. this is what the precedence, and the reason why I feel there's precedence to this because of what this country has showed. Yeah. And that's the other thing to as to why people can't feel that justice was served. And it's because they almost want injustice to happen because of the injustice that happened in them. And that's what feels fair. Yeah. Because if it was on the other shoe, would have it happened this way? And a lot of people confidently can say that, no, I truly don't believe that that's what would have happened. So in order for them to feel justified, they want injustice to happen to Kyle Rittenhouse too, because to them, that is what's fair. Yeah. And yeah. it's hard for me to tell them not to feel that way because honestly, I feel that way too. But you can't write a wrong with another wrong. I just don't believe in that. No, so yeah, the what the case should be is that, yeah, that type of equal justice should apply to all. You know, yes. so whether Kyle Rittenhouse is a white man, a black man, an Asian man, Mexican man, doesn't matter. The The verdict would be the same regardless. But yeah, what some of these people are angry about, rightfully so, is the fact that you can't definitively say, oh yeah, no, it wouldn't have been the same. But the fact that there's even a question mark, yeah, the fact that it's questionable at best, makes it a problem. Yeah. And, and, and that's a glaring issue in this country, clearly, right? Yeah. And this case, just kind of brought more attention to that fact. And it's just like, well, still, it doesn't take away from what this kid did yeah. and how he handled himself. I mean, the way, I mean, he's a free man now. I mean, I think I just saw a picture where he went to Florida and he met with Trump at Mar-a-Lago, <laughs> you know? The, the, the right is fucking loving they it. They love man. it yeah, so they, much. They are, and he, he got offered an internship by uh, the, some Florida congressman. Um, like, yo, you want to give this guy a job offer now after all this yeah, shit? Right, like, right. to go, go, come into politics and now be a face for what? Right. Exactly. And to represent who? Right. To you? You know, like, that's commendable? Yeah. Like, I, I can't understand. Like, who wants OJ to be on their party? Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly, exactly. What's up, Twitter world? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Democrats? Yeah. But, but I think, too, that, you know, Kyle getting this type of... um love and like the embracement that he's getting from that community it must feel good too considering that he was bullied and he even dropped out of high school because of it now all of a sudden he has this community who's like putting him on a pedestal and being like they're yeah, worshiping man. me they love me yeah <laughs> I, I hope this kid has people around him that also can tell that humble him and tell him like listen you shouldn't have been there in the fucking first place yeah and well i think he even realizes that because you know the lawyer his lawyer had said that um if he could take it back he wouldn't have gone out yeah yeah he wouldn't have gone there because of what's happened you know yeah. so there's like the lawyer didn't want to use the word regret right or, or anything that might paint him to be mm -hmm. looking guilty but it was in an indirect way it was pretty clear what he was saying was that Kyle regrets being there yeah, and he yeah, wishes yeah, he yeah. wasn't there. It's just, it's, it's weird, man. And I know some people are going to listen to this podcast and I'm kind of uh, interested to what people say. And there's probably some details that we're missing. Um, I mean, I've read this. 
<laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty thoroughly. I think the details we covered is pretty much like the hey, main chunks dude, of it. You're a racist, bro. Don't even talk to me. <laughs> <Yes. that. laughs> well, that's and the you, problem. And you they, love like, Kyle Rittenhouse. Well, yeah, that's saga. the thing. It's, it's, it's such a hot take right now. For me to say that yeah. was the right call, it's like, oh, you bro. You support white supremacy. Yeah, now. what the fuck are you talking? I'm like, did you? And, and it's appalling to me because some of the people that I've had this conversation with, once you get into it, they actually don't know any of the details of the case. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Because I, I, like, I was that person. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> and I'm I read like, the details and I'm like, oh yeah. shit, I'm wrong. I'm like, yeah. oh, so what are you basing it off of then? Headlines, sensationalism. Um, so, but what did they say though? I'm, I'm so curious. It's just like, you know, the whole thing about the judge being biased, right? Yeah. Things like that. That, that, yeah. that the media was trying to portray to kind of discredit this whole uh, case. Yeah. Yeah, be yeah. Before I read up into it, I literally thought he went there with a gun to start some shit. Yes. That's, yeah, I'm not going to lie. That's, just, that's what I had thought too. Yeah. From like kind of the cursory details I was getting about it. I'm like, oh, this motherfucker is guilty for damn sure. Yeah, you know, like but, this guy was out there. He was a fucking... Well, it doesn't help that he was white with a yeah. gun because <laughs> every mass shooter. And he was wearing those gloves. Right. But he was wearing those gloves because he was trying to do some medical yeah, shit. Exactly. Yeah, obviously, the optics look bad. And it's just yeah. like this Pyongyang didn't even think ahead of what he was doing. Yeah, he yeah. He just wanted to serve a life's purpose. Maybe because of being dropped out of high school, perhaps he's like, because he went through EMT training. Yeah. He's going to find a purpose in his life. He want to yeah. utilize it out there in the real world, in a real situation. Yeah. But like, what fucking ambulance have you seen with a bunch of fucking EMTs pull, pulling out their guns and shit? I you know, know? <laughs> it's just it's it sucks. You know, the whole yeah. situation fucking sucks. Yeah, and I I feel like I mean I wonder what people are going to say. Like, if you really did read up on everything and then you saw the video too, it's not just reading up; it's it's seeing with our own eyes what watching happened. the trial. The whole trial is fucking available for yeah. you to watch. You can, you can watch every thing. single second of it if you want. And, and it sucks too because I'm sitting there thinking, and I feel, I feel bad. I feel like a bad person because I, a part of me wants him to go to jail, mm -hmm. but then I know he doesn't deserve to be there. Yeah, and that makes me feel like a bad person, and it kind of makes me a bad person if I think about it. But if I if I was a part of that jury and I really wanted to look at it at the extent of the law. I probably would have said he wasn't guilty. Yeah. And that's yeah. the hard pill for me to swallow. Yeah. Me reading a threat is the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and look, man, again, the whole uh, minor uh, with the firearm, that charge, it was just a misdemeanor. So he probably would have served like a handful of months or something. It was, it wouldn't have been, I think it's nine months it was, was nine like the months. maximum, right? Yeah. So he and probably would have. Would he have served? Yeah. That? He probably he wouldn't, wouldn't have served. Have. He could have even just so gotten house arrest with community service or something, yeah, right? Yeah. But now he he's free to have more guns now, right? Right. <laughs> right. He's 18 now. Yeah. But yeah. So like that charge, but again, because of their statute in Wisconsin law, I mean, based on that, it's like, well, I mean, that's pretty fucking stupid. This mm. is moronic, but it's the law. Now, does the state have to pay his legal expenses? That I don't know. Because apparently yeah. there's a new debate now if Kyle Rittenhouse should just keep that $2 million that was raised from. Oh. So now he's this motherfucker's a millionaire too. <laughs> oh, I'd be so mad. That shit? <laughs> I would be so mad. My crypto has been tanking so hard. <laughs> I would be so fucking yeah. mad right now, dude. Dude, damn. it's like, God damn. Like now you think about like kids who thinking about doing school shootings. No, let's go shoot up a protest. Yeah. You know? yeah. No, I think there's like a let lot me of, be a meal. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's a lot of important lessons to take away from this. But again, man, like for me, like I just said, when I had first caught like the cursory details, I thought, you know, I, I had a preconceived notion. White kid, he has a fucking you know rifle. Oh, for sure, this was out for like blood. He was looking for blood. Yeah, yeah. but but that was private thoughts. I didn't go. Oh, let me go on Twitter. This motherfucker's guilty. I'm like, let me. Not look. me. I put that in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was pretty sure about it. I'm like, <laughs> let me let me do my due diligence here and let me look into actually what happened. And the more I looked into it, and the more I learned, I was like, holy shit, I I was wrong. You know, yeah. I was wrong about this. This this kid clearly was defending himself. And he just happened to have a gun to be able to do that. And this jackass of a kid yeah. was defending himself. Our justice, <laughs> our, ju our justice system. Dave is trying anyone uh, to like hate this guy. <laughs> hey man, it, the justice system saves and protects dumb people too. Yeah, right? yeah, it it's does. Because they can't it does. defend themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. And you also want this justice system to work for you in this favor. And once again, I'm... Hopefully, if it wasn't a white boy, it would have happened the same way. Yeah. Yeah. That would that's be what the we hope. hope. That yeah. would be the hope. But again, the fact that it's questionable, that's the problem, yeah. you know, within the country. 
Well, guys, that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain podcast. Uh, I'm curious to see what you guys think about the case. And if you did read every article, you saw the court proceedings, you saw the video. I'm, I'm so curious if you guys were a part of the jury, what you guys would have uh, convicted him for, uh, specifically for the charges that were brought up against him. I'm, I'm curious. Guilty. <laughs> no, gonna, you know what my heart says, but you know be, what my brain says. Yeah, you there's going to be some FX drama, you know, yeah. about it. You know, yeah, the people sure. versus Rittenhouse. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I would like to have a conversation with this kid. Just be like, the fuck were you thinking, man? Yeah, you know, yeah. So you want to <laughs> save people, and, but carry it around an AR-15. Around a gun? Yeah. Dude, just be a medic for the Marines, man. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Just Pepper spray works fine too, guys. Yeah. But uh, you can catch the Genius Brain every Thursdays and Sundays up until January 1st of next year. Uh, next year, we're only going uh, once a week. Um, so until then, guys, we'll see you all next time. You can find Ed at Ed Park VP. And you can find the other Ed at Ed2. Uh, Secret Society, as you can see, the gear that we're wearing Rocking right the now. the new gear right now. Is, uh, is out right now. The, the fucking, Back to Basics collection. Back to Basics collection is fucking fire. A lot of oversized tees right now. Comfortable ass sweater. Super nice and warm. Looks dope as shit, by the way. He actually changed out of his sweats because he was sweating. I was sweating. <laughs> yep. And I'm wearing my H&M collection. <laughs> Shout out to H&M also. Yeah, yeah. I got a fucking big booty. It keeps me warm. Well, uh, yeah. Write in the comment section below and let me know. Interact. And we'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.